Good morning, all. So we will uh, get started with uh, uh, our presentation. Uh, outline for today's class: We will talk about quartile, Chebyshev's inequality, and then the concept of what is meant by approximately normal. And then we will talk about paired data, data sets. We will uh, discuss relation between two sets of data. Okay. For example, you know things like the salary goes up. Okay, there is a DA announce, dearness uh, allowance. Okay, then the price of let's say brinjal. Is it correlated? You know things like that. Okay, first we will take up. Uh, sample percentile. So, um, the sample 100p percentile, okay, for example, you would say uh, 25 percentile. If you say 25 percentile, then P is 0.25, okay, 10 percent percentile, then you would say P is 0.1. Uh, I'm sure some of these things are already known to you, but we will just go through this quickly. It's also in the textbook. So it is defined in such a way that at least 100 percent, 100 p percent of data would be less than or equal to data value. Okay. So we are talking about when you have lots of points, okay, which you have been which have been arranged in a particular sequence. So, for example, you know median. Median is approximately midpoint, okay, and that is known as second quartile. Quartile means 25 percent, okay. 25 percent percentile is known as first quartile. 50 percent percentile is second quartile or median, okay. When you say median, we have already discussed in great detail that corresponds to about half the value, about the midpoint, when the data points are organized in increasing order. Then once you order it, then you go to 25 percent, means one fourth of the value, first quartile, median is second quartile, 75 percent is third quartile. I am sure you are aware of this, many of the um, testing agencies give the results in terms of percentile. Okay. So, this is the third quart quartile. Okay. So, roughly speaking, roughly speaking, if it is in between, take one higher, roughly speaking, because this, we did not do this for median. What we did was, when we had, we had lots of values. Okay, we had lots of values. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So, for example, in this case, so we said that this is the whatever value is. Supposing we had something like this, we took the mean. That is our median, right? So, roughly speaking, that's why I said that if in between take one higher. This is the example that has been given in the book. Take one value higher, which if I apply, I will be taking the larger value. But uh, uh, if it is exactly on one, take the midpoint of this and the next value. Mostly there is no confusion when the when you get the value exactly, but when you have value to be rounded, then there are some uh, some uh, issues. In fact, this uh, point of percentile is not defined uniquely. Okay, there are many definitions, and unfortunately, in the book uh, they have discussed about only one definition and gone through it quickly. Um, so, what I will do is, in interest of time, I'll just move on. The, it is discussed in great detail in this uh, website cnx.org. So, if you are interested, you can actually go through this. Some example is given, but I thought that I will just uh, skip this. 
uh, because we are running out of time. If you want, I'll give a link for this in the uh, website. Okay, in uh, yesterday's class, we solved the crossword puzzle and then we got something like box and whisker plot. Okay, do you remember this? Box and whisker plot. So here it is. So I have given some annotations also of this. So what happens is, uh, so this is the data set called ZEET, whatever that is. I took it from uh, Wikipedia. I just added the, uh, added some notes. It is typically written from the, it is plotted from the smallest value. If you see here, if I click this, not sure whether you can read that. So essentially here it says, okay, it says, uh, can you read the uh, note there? You probably can't do that. It says minimum. So this point refers to the minimum. That is you have a data set. It belongs to some particular range, minimum to maximum. So this is minimum. And if you see here, sorry, this is maximum value indicated with minimum, maximum, and then this is the first quartile, this is the median, this line corresponds to median, this corresponds to the first quartile, this is the minimum value, this is the maximum value, this is third quartile. So, box and whisker plot is something we uh, discussed yesterday, but it is a way of representing an entire data set using a figure of this type. Minimum, maximum, first quartile, median, and then these, the lengths of these lines also denote the range, the distance between these data points. Okay? So, it is a convenient way to represent. So, this is what we saw in the uh, last class, but this is box and whisker plot. In the book, it uh, says box plot, but it is also known as uh, whisker plot, box whisker plot. Okay, next uh, we will uh, go to the next topic, which is uh, Chebyshev's inequality. It essentially says that given lots of data, how many data points will be around within mean, okay. So for example, supposing you have a collection of data points, let us say x1 through xn, and let us calculate sample mean, which is x bar, and then calculate the standard deviation also, let us call it s, we saw the formula for all this. Now, let us define this symbol S of k. Now, what is S of k? It refers to all elements of this data set within k s f dot denotes from, from the mean. So, that means you have all x i from the mean x bar less than k times s. Okay, that denotes this k. So, this k is any number greater than or equal to 1. Okay, for example, I can put s of k to be 1.5, k to be 1.5. Then I will say that s of 1.5 refers to all the elements that are grouped around the mean over 1.5 standard deviation. Okay. Then, if you have this, let us say that number of n of s k is number of elements in that group. So, can we tell some number? Can we give some estimate of this number? So, here is the formula number of elements in this group s k over n, this n is same as this n that is the total number of elements. Then that will be greater or equal to this 
expression which is greater than 1 minus 1 over k squared. In the book, they have it is written as k sub 2, but there is no sub 2, it should be k squared. So, what I have here is correct. Okay. So, the number of elements in this set, the group that I talked about will be let us say greater than 1 minus 1 over k square. Okay. This is the uh, expression for, this is the uh, Chebyshev's inequality. So, what does it mean? Okay. Let us do some calculation. Let us choose, suppose we choose k equals 3 by 2 in the above expression. Okay. Then we will get the same expression except in k I am going to put 3 by 2. In the place of k I am going to put 3 by 2. Okay. So, you want to do this calculation? Let us put k, k equals 3 by 2 and let us cal calculate what will be n of s k. I want you to do this calculation now for k equals 1.5 and also k equals 2 k equals 2 means 2 standard deviations from the midpoint. What will that be? See if you can just do the calculation. Take the last one. Let us take the last expression. Do not worry about this. Uh, you know, if n is very large, we can say that, you know, these are very close. In any case, this is going to be greater than this. So, let us take this la last expression. Do it for k equals 1.5 and k equals 2 and assume that there are, assume that n is 100. Suppose there are 100 data points, what will be this n of s k? So, what will happen if k is uh, 1.5? What will be this uh, capital N? So, we are taking k equals 1.5 and n equals 100. And n is 100. n is the total number of points, you can take any number but let us suppose that we have 100. So, what is n of s k? Yeah, can you speak louder? Okay, 55.55 or 56 depending on how whether you round it. So, it says that 55.56 uh, points will be in this group inside this range. What will happen if you take k equals to 75? Okay. So, this says if you take k equals 1.5, then 55 percent will lie within 25 percent of the mean. Then if you take k equals 2, then 75 percent will lie within 25 percent of the mean. Now, in the book, they have given, so is it okay? Do you have any question? Any question here? Okay. So, I want you to think about how will you write this in Scilab? This is something we discussed in the class. Supposing I give some data set and say calculate this in Scilab and I say that you have lots of points, let us say 100 points and somebody has already coded this, somebody has already put this in a table and given to you. So, we, which means that you do not have to type that in. So, it is already there. right? Then I say that use Chebyshev's inequality and calculate this number n of s2. Okay, you have 100 data points that is already coded. So, it is let us say that is in a in a vector called data. Data equals within square bracket 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to 100. You have all those data points. So, how would you find this n of s 2? What is the first step? If you want to use Scilab, what is the first step? Yeah, mean. So, you would say what is the command? Mean of data, let us say m equals mean of within brackets data. Okay, that is the first step. Then what is the next one? What is the next step? See here you need this S also. 
what is s standard deviation how do you calculate standard deviation in scilab st i think it is st underscore deviation right is that correct does anyone remember that what is the command for standard deviation yeah it is st underscore deviation this is what we said in the last class yeah we we had actually discussed this um, grades right we said that people within mean one standard deviation above will give ab two above will give or anybody above one standard deviation will give aa and so on okay all right so so we find that then what do we do we have found mean we have found standard deviation what is the next thing what command will we use we want to collect we want to locate the numbers okay we want to collect the numbers that are a distance of at a distance of plus minus let's say 2s from the mean we want to locate all of those so what command will we use in scilab anyone recalls we use the command called find so we will say find and within bracket we will say that uh, data greater than data greater than yeah data greater than m minus s and and is given by ampersand and data less than m plus s so actually you have to put 2s so 2 times stand s you should not put 2s it will say 2s is unknown 2 star s so what it will do is it will collect all of that and put it in this uh, in this variable if you don't specify a variable it will put it in ans then you just find the length length of ans it will tell you what is the total number of elements in this answer vector okay so i would want you to try this this problem i would want you to try but the grades i'll put so if you just go through this the syntax will become clear i would want you to try that okay so it is easy to do this calculation now but it turns out this chebyshev's inequality is very conservative because it is, it says that this for example it says this n will be greater than 55% okay in an example for example they have given a uh, an example with uh, top telling top 10 selling cars for 1999 they say that uh, for this they actually found 90% of the data to fall within plus minus 1.5s okay in the example they have given in that sense it is a conservative uh, example conservative bounds okay okay so because it is conservative conservative means it it under predicts okay it will definitely be it's like saying that it will be greater than 2 but actually you have 10 then 2 is a very poor estimate so tighter you would look for a tighter estimate then you would say instead of 2 can you say something like it will be greater than 5 okay when you know that the value is going to be 10 that there will be 10 points within that range and somebody says it is going to be greater than 2 so that's not a very good estimate so you would want a better estimate and um, so in order to understand this i want to define a new variable called rk which refers to all points outside this range previously we said that it is a group within that mean in order to explain this new uh, inequality i'm going to define a new variable called rk which refers to things outside this okay by the way this uh, symbol rk is not defined in the book so this is a symbol that i have defined to make it clear okay so sk means the things that are within let's say ks distance from the mean whereas rk means 
things outside that set. Okay? So, greater or equal to k s. Okay? So, as a result s k plus r k will be equal to n. The total number will be n. So, if this n of s k is greater than 1 minus k squared, then n of r k will be less than or equal to 1 by k squared. Okay? Things outside that range will be less than or equal to 1 by k squared. See if this is okay. By the way, we did not prove this. We did not prove this. I would want you to read from the book. Proof is given in the book for this uh, Chebyshev's inequality. Both um, the one we have seen now, until now, and the one I am going to talk about. Okay? This n of rk is uh, it is uh, less than or equal to 1 by k squared is, is the Chebyshev's inequality that we have seen so far. Is this okay? Are you with me? Yes? Okay. Now, so there is another inequality which is little more tight. It is called one-sided Chebyshev inequality. So, this is the inequality we got earlier namely this n the things outside the outside this grouping is 1 over k is should be less than or equal to 1 by k squared. Whereas, this one sided Chebyshev's inequality says that it will in fact be less than 1 over 1 plus k squared. Right? So, what will happen if you put k equals 2? If you put k equals 2, this will be what will this be? 0.25. So, it will say that 25 percent of the values will be outside. Okay? That is the things outside that grouping will be less than or equal to 25 percent. Whereas, if you substitute the same for uh, here in the place of k squared, this will be equal to 0.2. So, it says that 20 percent will be outside this grouping. As a result, it, it gives uh, a less conservative bound. By the way, this also is uh, proved in the class in the, in the book. So, this is what I have said for k equals 2, if you do the calculation, you will get 1 by 4, and whereas you get 1 by 5. Okay? I would want you to read this and so, because of this I say that one sided Chebyshev inequality is less conservative. Uh, before I go to the next topic, I would want to talk about the quiz that is going to be held one week from now in the same classroom. Okay? First quiz, I announced it on the first day, quiz 1. So, it will be held okay, okay. It will be held one week from now in the same classroom. Sorry? Is the date correct? Ah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Is it okay? Date is okay? So, we will do this uh, one week from now. What I wanted to discuss is how this quiz will be conducted. Uh, this quiz will be prepared by contributions from all of you. Okay? So, what I am going to do is, I am going to open, if it does not work out, I am going to set the paper. Right? So, what we are going to do is, we are going to set up a forum in uh, Moodle called Q and A forum, in which you can upload your questions. Only after you upload 
one question, you can see other people's question, whatever other people have uploaded. Then, from the questions that have been contributed, we will select some questions randomly and give them. Uh, and earlier the submit, the better chances of those questions getting included in the quiz. Okay? And if we do not get good questions, then we will add some questions. Supposing we find only some interesting questions, then we will add our own questions. I will add my own questions. Okay? But if there are enough good questions, it is possible that all the questions will come from the question bank that you will be creating. So, the, the quiz is, quizzes on the problems on the material covered in the first two chapters as well as in the case studies that I presented. Anything you find, anything you think is reasonable. So, every good question has a good chance of getting selected and they are as random because we also have a procedure that we will ask our TAs to select them and then randomly select out of the selections and there are 40 TAs. So, it turns out that if you have more than 30 data points, there is a likelihood of things becoming normal and uh, random selection will work and things like that. So, this is the procedure we are going to follow. If there are not enough questions, then we will do our own. Any questions? Is it okay? Should we try? No, we should not try. Why not? Give the mic there. They think it is a bad idea. Uh, it is because it is not a conventional way. Okay, it is an innovative one, but I do not think it works out. Okay. Any other, anybody who, will, who says this is something we could try? Uh, what is your name please? Dhanashree. Dhanashree, okay. So, uh, so what can go wrong? Supposing I am, I am, what I am telling is, let us try it. The deadline is Friday, uh, Wednesday 5 p.m. And we find that the questions are not there. You are not going to, you do not decide not to submit. I am going to set the paper anyway. Essentially, what you are telling is that I will have to set the paper, which I am glad to. But what I am saying is we are willing to do this extra work of giving, trying this out. Let us try it out. If questions come, it is okay. If the questions do not come, I am going to set the paper anyway. I am not saying that there are no questions, so we are going to cancel the quiz. I am not saying that. Okay? We can discuss anything else, but not this. So, coming back to this, your contribution. Do you think it is too much work for you? So, why, why would you not want it? Do you think some people will have an unfair advantage? You think so? So, what do you think, Manas? You want to say, give your comments? I do not see any unfair advantage in conducting such a quiz. The point is it is a random thing and the weightage is not that high. So, you are not bound to lose much as even if someone knows a question beforehand. And if you post a question, you know all the questions beforehand. So, it is not a disadvantage but rather an advantage. So, okay. I will tell you where this will, this will be an unfair advantage. Supposing there are only 10 questions that are submitted. If there are only 10 questions submitted, then suppose I, there are going to be 4 out of that 10. Then obviously, there could be an unfair advantage for some people. Okay? Under that condition, we can do one of the two things. One is to say that there are too little, so we cannot really use that. Okay? We cannot use that, I will set a new one. I think that is the only solution. Because we were actually thinking of telling, okay, for those people who set those questions, we will give a separate paper. We might still use their questions, but for everybody else. But then there are issues like their friends would be knowing it and we will not know who their friends are. 
So there will be some problems like that. So we can, we can say that, think about some number. If the questions are less than, let's say, 200, OK, we can say we can scrap it. Is that OK? Is that OK? Yes, no? If there are less than 200 contributions, we'll say that, sorry, we'll not use that. OK? Next, I want to talk about the next concept called normal data set. So most large, most large data sets are bell shaped. They peak at sample median. So this is a hypothesis. Then if so, such data sets are known as um, normal uh, data sets. And there is, uh, and the histogram that you get out of these will be known as normal histogram. Okay, so essentially it is a bell shaped curve, normal data set. So what it says is that you have, so it is bell shaped, right. Okay, this is the, so this is the normal data set. Then you have Okay, this is Q, so it comes like this. So this is at one end, this is skew to the left. Similarly, you have skew to the right, in which case the tail portion comes to the right hand side. So you think in terms of the tail. But this is just a nomenclature. And there is an empirical rule, this is known as empirical rule for what is meant by approximately normal. What is meant by approximately normal with mean x bar, collect a data set, let its elements be denoted as x1, x2, all the way up to xn. The mean is x bar and the standard deviation is s. Then the approximate, then the empirical rule states that if the data set is, the data set can be called approximately normal, the, if the following are satisfied. Approximately 68 percent of data lie in, within one standard deviation, 95 percent lie within two standard deviation and 99.7 percent lie within three standard deviation. So uh, just to do some calculation, for example, uh, example 2.5a in the book. So it talks about the scores, marks scored by students in a statistics uh, exam. Using the, by the way, this is known as the empirical rule. Using the empirical rule, they do the calculation and find that using this, they calculate the mean, right, using let's say Scilab, they calculate the standard deviation and find the things within some range, count the total number and find the percentage of this total number, okay. And 68 percent as per the empirical rule will lie in this range, 95 percent in this range, whereas the actual numbers are 53.6 and 100. Of course, you can call it approximately normal or you might say that it is not, not close to approximately normal. So whether you want to call it approximately normal or not will depend on how close your approximation is. Okay, is this clear? These are the estimates what you would expect from here as per the rules, but the actual values are 53.6 and 100. Okay, 68 percent in this, but actual number is only 
53.6, 95% are expected, whereas it is 100%. Everything is in this range. Okay, we come to the last topic. This is the sample correlation. This is what I mentioned. Supposing a DA is given to the government employees, and what is the price of brinjal in different cities? Okay. Or you can say that what is the DA, what is the brinjal price increase in the last 10 DA increments and see if there is a correlation between these two. Okay. Say first rains have come, what is the increase in umbrella sales in the last let us say 10 years. Okay. For example, unemployment data and strikes. And the, an example given in the book is daytime temperature and defective parts, parental income and students buying textbooks. In fact, there is another example given here. So it is years spent in school and pulse rate. Okay. They essentially took people who are like in the 50s and said, let us find the pulse rate okay. and then said, okay, how many years did you spend in school? Okay. So, there is a correlation between these two. Is there a correlation? If these are related, then how do we decipher them? Can we draw any conclusions out of this? So, this is an extremely important thing. And uh, very often, um, a lot of our predictions are based on such correlations. If you look at economics, if you look at prediction of how the economy is going to happen, what is going to be the growth rate. So, the government depends on this because we do not have an exact model. These do not obey conservation principle. I cannot write a mass balance equation. I cannot write a momentum balance equation. These are exact. Whereas, something like this helps figure out, for example, you want to predict how the stock market is going to behave. Okay. We do not have a definite model. So, here something like this is extremely important. So, what is this based on? So, you have x values, you have y values. We talked about two different things. Supposing large values of x are associated with large values of y. Larger dA means larger brinjal price increase, supposing there is a correlation like this. And also, if small values are associated with small values of x are associated with small values of y, then if you find the difference between the value and the mean, these will have the same sign x i minus x bar and y i minus y bar will have the same sign and as a result the product will be greater than 0. Okay. That means, we say that these are correlated okay. and if you sum up all of those, this is for just any one, you sum up all of this then the sum is likely to be large. So, here is the sample correlation coefficient. Okay. Look at, we sum up all those products divided by n minus 1 into S x S y, standard deviation x, standard deviation y, it is this and this r, what is the value of this r? Can you guess? What it will be in what range? Yeah, it, it can be actually in the range minus 1 to plus 1. Okay. For example, if you have so this is let us say y, this is x, then this is positive whereas So, then this is R is 
greater than minus 1 r is negative okay there are some properties of r minus 1 to plus 1 you can prove this if you have a relation of this type then r equals 1 if you put a minus bx then r equals minus 1 okay this is true also for scaled quantities in the in the book for example he talks about this pulse rate and number of years in the school and he finds he calculates that and finds r equals 0.7 okay so does it mean does it mean can we conclude you understand this example does, can we conclude that if somebody goes to school lots of years they will have good pulse rate can we conclude so this book argues saying that it is associated not causation the reason is it says that it's likely the people who have gone to school are likely to be doing some kind of work so maybe as a result the pulse rate is lower okay so it is it is difficult to conclude this to be that if you do this this will happen you can at the most explain this as an associated these things will possibly happen together not one as a cause for the other one okay uh, so some examples are given it is possible to solve all of them using scilab very easily uh, this example is in fact i have solved one of the examples where he gives that r equals 0.7 for pulse rate i have solved it in scilab i'll post it in moodle for you okay all right so i want to now uh, conclude the last uh, uh, bit that i want to say is uh, uh, some of you have uh, agreed to do role play have come forward i would want you to meet me at 3 o'clock this afternoon anybody else who is interested also i have already announced uh, in moodle did i put in put it in moodle at 3 pm in my office now we are also contemplating giving some uh, similar activities of this type okay so what uh, so this is one the other thing is i'm not sure how many of you would want to do projects and so on would you want to do a project no no yes no okay so there could be different things you know we have not finalized on this we are not sure whether we can do that it will depend on your uh, uh, participation also so some other you you want to say some about different examples just say that only so the possible things that you could do in such an activity is maybe like design a game for a casino a uh, game that does not exist as of now not copy paste a game uh, in which like the dealer has the maximum chance of winning but the part the customer thinks that all the customers put together have a better chance of winning an exam a classical example of this is blackjack other examples would be like coming up with small things like uh, where a mode is more important than a median and on uh, and vice versa so you you can yourselves come up with different kinds of projects that you would like to do you could propose topics that i would like to work on this it should not necessarily be like a big project or something it can be like a two or three page report or a case study that is also fine okay um, we have not so the uh, there are the other things that uh, we discussed yesterday we have been thinking about is that there are actually a lot of case studies it is possible for you to report some but at this point as uh, some of you fear we are also absolutely not sure whether uh, the biggest problem that we po can possibly have is how do we evaluate the contribution is that is that a reason why some people said no is that the is it the fear of evaluation that made you say no or is it something else why did some people say no here we don't want to do those things 
is it is it mark or is it too much work which one too much work now some of you immediately said no you must have had some reason why experience in the last semester in which course cs101 so what happened so was it too much work or unfair grades both so that is going to be the thing we have to discuss so if we if we restrict this to 5% is it acceptable yes no we should probably include it in the poll but if large number okay by the way uh, we have put together a survey and it is going to be in google of of course right now it is in uh, iit bombay but this will be hosted on uh, google docs right and then we would want you to take and we will use this data for further in the rest of the course okay it will be an extremely good data set if you can create it okay so i'm going to uh, stop here next class is role play the class after that is uh, quiz thank you